The Buddhist teachings are full of images of safety. He compares the practice to being in a fortress. You've got a strong foundation. You've got a moat around the fortress. You've got a wall covered with plaster so nobody can climb the wall. You've got a wise gatekeeper. And you've got plenty of food. And that's just the path. As for the goal, the canon is full of images of safety. It's a harbor. It's a shelter. A place of rest. And of course, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha are a refuge. And we find that refuge by developing their qualities. So the mind becomes a refuge. Now, the nature of this refuge is not that it's simply a place where you run away and hide. As with a fortress, you're there on the frontier, ready to deal with enemies, your own defilements, the violence you've picked up from other people, the ones that you've grown in your own basement. But the Buddha is giving you the strengths you need in order to face these things. The main cause for suffering, he said, is ignorance. And it's not so much a lack of knowledge. It's a willed ignorance. It comes from fear of the truth. There are certain things we know about our own minds that we don't like, and we're afraid of them. And so we try to push them away. In fact, there are many things in life that we push away. We don't like to think about aging or illness or death. We have that chant about the 32 parts of the body. People say, oh, please don't chant that. They don't want to think about it. There's a lot that we run away from, but it doesn't make us safe. Even if you decide you're never going to think about aging, illness, or death ever in your life, that doesn't guarantee you that they're not going to happen. In fact, they will happen and you'll be totally unprepared for when they do come. And as for the defilements of the mind, the, the real troublemakers, the more you pretend they're not there, the stronger they grow. They go underground and they spread their tentacles everywhere, like the thing. And so what we're trying to do as we practice is develop that position of strength where we can face these things and not be afraid of them. And that fortress, our main foundation pole, is conviction. And conviction starts with simply the belief that there are people who have gained awakening, who have been able to face down their defilements and come out winning. And they did it not because they were gods or goddesses. They were human beings just like us, and they were able to do it by developing the same strengths that we have. The conviction comes not just from hearing about these things but also putting them into practice. And sometimes it takes a while to gain conviction not only in the principle of action, but in the principle of your actions, i.e. the fact that you are capable of doing these things. You are capable of being more mindful, more concentrated, gaining more discernment, developing more patience, more equanimity, more compassion for others. Sometimes this confidence is hard to gain, it takes a while. But as you keep chipping away, chipping away, you find that your confidence becomes confirmed, becomes verified. Yes, this does 
this does work. You have these capabilities. And it's this confidence that allows you to take on bigger and bigger enemies. It allows you to admit that they're there. This is an important part of looking into the mind. Is you see a desire, and many times you are afraid of really looking carefully at the desire. They're afraid of what's behind it. And it's certainly when we have a position of confidence and a position of solidity that we can begin to admit, oh, there is that unskillful emotion there. There was some jealousy in there that I didn't think was there. There were some other unpleasant emotions that I didn't want to admit my, to myself. Well, it's easier to admit those things to yourself when you also see that you've got positive qualities. So the picture isn't totally bleak. This is one of the reasons we work on concentration. Again, it's part of the fortress. It's not something we hide away in and hope that everything else is going to go away. We develop this as a strength, as a sense of well-being, with a sense of competence, i.e. the sense that we can do this. In the beginning, it may be discouraging as you see your mind flying off in different directions. But if you learn to stick with it and learn how to appreciate even small gains, you begin to get a greater and greater sense that, yes, you can handle this. I was talking to someone a while back who was afraid of the, the current financial situation. The family might lose the house. And she said the, the hard part of it was just that fear that she wouldn't be able to handle it if the house was lost. When she actually sat down and realized that, yes, she could handle it, she could survive. Things wouldn't be as nice as they are in right now, but she could handle it. The fear went away. Didn't have to control her life. And she began to see how many tentacles it set out affected other aspects of her life as well. So an important part of the practice is developing this confidence in your competence that you don't have to be afraid of the truth, that whatever the truth serves up, you're able to handle it. It's a passage where John Mahabhava says, when you live with the truth, there's nothing to fear. The truth has nothing to serve up but more truth. It's when you're living with fictions, with a lot of make-believe in the mind. That's when you feel threatened by the truth. When you try to pretend that there's nothing unskillful in the mind, that all of your all of your intentions are good, or that they will go away with some magical practice. That's when the truth is threatening. Then you build up all kinds of walls around it, but it keeps breaking through those walls. And you put up more walls. You spend a lot of energy repairing the walls, filling, filling in the cracks, and yet greed, anger, and delusion, all the unskillful emotions, they'll they manage to break through the walls, seep through the walls, like tree roots. They kind of work their way through the walls and then bring them down, these roots of what's unskillful in the mind. So rather than expending a lot of energy in a useless way. Trying to devote your energy to building something that's really true. It's interesting that of all the virtues, the Buddha makes truth the most important. Truth is not just a quality of accurate statements, but it's also a quality of the mind. In fact, if you want to find the truth, you have to develop this quality of truthfulness, the willingness to look at what's there, admit what's there. So you can work with it. But really to look at it requires that you develop a good solid foundation so you don't feel threatened by it. This is why comprehending suffering, letting go of the cause of suffering, requires developing the path. 
because it's not just a path, it's also a fortress, a safe place, a strong place. Because when the mind is well endowed with mindfulness and concentration and discernment, it really can handle these things. Greed comes up and you can see right through it. Anger comes up, fear comes up, delusion comes up and you see right through it. And you realize that whatever there is that's unskillful in the mind, you don't have to identify with it. There may be a particularly insistent member of the committee, but it's just that. It's just a member of the committee. It's not the whole committee. And it's not necessarily more real than anything else. This is one of the big things that brings down our practice, is the belief that our good qualities are somehow less real than our bad qualities. Also because we've got them behind those walls, so we can't really see them for what they are. We see their tentacles seeping through and they seem monstrous. But as you learn to develop your own strong qualities, you begin to see that, as John Swat liked to say, the light of discernment can, in one flash, can do away with a lot of darkness. No matter how long the darkness has been there, no matter how big it is. One light can destroy it. And so when you develop this quality of truthfulness and not being afraid of the truth, and you test it bit by bit by bit, you begin to see that it's not just an empty bravado. But it's a real strength. You really do develop strong fortress walls. The fortress is well endowed with food, weapons, soldiers, wise guardians, wise people at the gate. So that whatever the enemy, you're prepared. You can handle it. So work on developing these strengths. So you don't have to be afraid of the truth. So you can get the truth on your side. What the Buddha said is the highest noble truth, the truth of liberation. It's the ultimate protection for the mind, the ultimate place of security and safety. That, too, is a possibility in the mind, a potential in the mind. So don't let all the unskillful potentials scare you off. There are plenty of good things to be found in here as well. 